we're going to do volume three of the Nook Chat, and it's going to be on the early schools of the Everson area. And uh, my wife, uh, Inez, is here because she was a student in a school that was built in 1906 as a one-room school. It was a two-room school when she went there, but uh, she uh, went through all eight grades in this little school called Glen Echo. Well, the schools in this area, they didn't worry too much about attendance. Uh, many of the boys, especially the boys, uh, needed to stay out for helping on the farm. The farm where they were make they were still trying to improve their farms, and so they needed all the labor, and so the boys had to stay home and and fix things, and and school was secondary. So a lot of the people had less than the normal schooling, but they still got, they had to pass the eighth grade test. And even when I went to school, about a third of my class quit at the end of the eighth grade because of they needed to go work. And most of them worked the rest of their lives and never had anything. Uh, I know my uh, uh, first uh, father-in-law, was told when he was 11 years old, he told by his dad, you're old enough to take care of yourself now. And uh, even though he stayed home, he paid rent, and he took care of himself from the time he was 11 until he died and at, uh, in his 80s. So uh, the, things were a little different then. The schools financed you. So uh, the, if you were working for $30 a month, that's what you got. And if you didn't like it, uh, you go, go find a job someplace else. She had one uh, uh, cousin who uh, did get married and was a school teacher. So they had to live away from the thing and not let anybody know that he was in residence with her uh, for the year that uh, she retired after that year. But that year she would have been fired and she would have not had to uh, continue on. But we went to Sear one day, well this was in Seattle, yeah. and uh, we saw some men's socks. And I says, how can you have men's socks here? Mm -hmm. Oh, didn't we tell you, Inez, I'm married and I have a husband. But the people in the country didn't know that. Because it had, you couldn't be married and be a teacher. Yeah. So, are there any questions that uh, we you have about early schools that we could answer for you? Where was the Nookshot school that your uncle went to located? Uh, okay, Nooksack had three school buildings. The first was the log cabin adjacent to Welch's house. Then they built a school which is now uh, the south southeast part of the cemetery. The cemetery, the original cemetery was the top, the top half, the north half of the easterly section. And then the school was built on this other half. And then in 1906, the city people of Nooksack decided that uh, they didn't want to walk up the hill anymore. And those country boys could walk another half mile to the so they built a school down in the city, and that was the school that most of us remember yeah. was the one down in the city, and they tore the uh, other one down uh, for the lumber. So the original one was pretty close to the uh, Nooksack Elementary School. The log, the log house was actually very close where the Nooksack Elementary is now, mm -hmm. and the second school was would be a little bit further away, but not much. They were both on the hill there. That's not much of a hill. Did people go by bicycle? Excuse me? Did people have bicycles to get to school? That's crazy. There, were no, there was no way to ride bicycles. They had horses. They had horses and walking. That's the way my grandma rode her horse down from, from Glen Echo, that was before Glen Echo was built, and rode it down, but the, she couldn't get across the creek with the horse, so she had a footbridge there, so he'd pick up the horse, take it home and stable it during the day, and then at night, he'd bring it back to the log, and she'd ride it home. That's the way he met her. She rode the side saddle. When I was in school, there was a boy, Teddy Dean. He came down from 
South North Pass. Pass. North Pass. But he rode his horse and he left it at my aunt and uncle's house during the day. Then he'd get on his horse, go home mm. after school. Teddy Dean. In the day, in the old days, they called school together with a, a bell, and he said he could remember if he was on his horse at the house, and when the bell rang, he could make it before the second bell, <laughs> and he was about five miles. Uh, so. He, but he was all downhill. <laughs> but he remembers the bells. That he, he needed to be on his horse and on his way down when the first bell rang. So, uh, but they lived up on the, uh, above the North Pass, way up at the end of the, what is it? There's a little road off the North Pass that goes way up on top of the hill. Nordham. Nordham. Nordham Road. Top of the Nordham Road. That's where he, the Deans lived. And he'd come down every day on his horse and, and go home on his horse. But that a lot of people had horses in those days. Not a lot of people. Some of them had horses. Some of them rode the, uh, 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 the in the story in the clinical book I tell about some of the kids would uh, get a ride on the uh, milk wagon. The guy that went around to pick up the cans from the uh, various farms, and he'd go by their house, and they'd just jump on the back of the back milk wagon and ride it over to the school. So that was. So school transportation was, but most people walked. Most of the students walked. And we used to have to telephone poles and another line of yeah. poles. So we would run a pole and walk a pole. If you, know, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Well, the poles, are, the poles were 300 but, feet apart, so they were running a block they were and, up and down, walking yeah. a block. So we'd run a pole. Oh. And then a walk a pole. And <laughs> that's how we got to school. Oh, so this, were those the telegraph lines? The what? Those were telegraph lines or phone yeah. lines? Yeah. yeah. And power poles. They had power poles power by poles. that time. Those are much closer together. Yeah. 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 Telegraph farms are farther apart. Anyway. <laughs> so. Yes, Reg? Was there homework in those days? Were you expected to do work at home? Not really. No, there was two chores to do at home. Yeah. Like Inez had to clean the dropping boards under the chickens in the morning, <laughs> and when she got home night, she had to get hay down for the cows and things like that. There just wasn't time for homework. But before I went to school, when I got up in the morning, that'd be about the first thing I'd go out to the chicken house. My sister and I, we had, Dad had uh, hose, hose, and we'd pull down the icky stuff, and then we'd have to go back and take the rest of it and put it into a big, big barrel, big, big like a boiler. Oh, it was interesting. And then we had to go back in the house and practically take a shower. <laughs> I had to milk too. Can you imagine going out in the barn and milking and staying there by a spit in the barn? And then coming in and getting cleaned up and going to school, it, uh, it, uh, I don't know what I smelled like. <laughs> but, uh, it didn't seem to bother him back because half, half the boys were, had done the same thing, so we probably all smelled like barnyard in the schools. So. Were, were there, are there a story about a uh, harsh winter or a, uh, hot summer we're having one now so do you remember anything like that that affected the school it was cold <laughs> we'd have a lot of snow in the northeaster and my dad had two horses but he had kind of a, like a sleigh so the kids on our street we'd come to school dad would drive us up to Glen Echo school and we'd get out and then I think he went home again, and then he'd come back and take us, yeah, back down the road, down the North pa what Pass, South Pass. Road. South Pass. Uh, her dad was a logger, so in the winter there, the woods were shut down, so. Yeah. Uh, but the thing she remembers is that uh, she used to complain <laughs> because it would be nice and sunny, and her mother would say, you can't go to school today. And she said, why? Because we can't heat the school. Uh, if, if you know Glen Echo, it's primarily glass. Three walls are glass, and uh, 
when that northeaster comes across that va valley, there's no way anybody could ever heat that building, no matter how hot they got the, the wood uh, fire going. They had two pot-bellied stoves in but one little room, was one so big room. Pretty. Mom, it's such a pretty day out. I think I'll go to school. She says, no, you won't. But I wanted to go to school. <laughs> So, but uh, other than that, uh, they just, school was whenever they had, and in the summer they didn't have school. They shut down, well even when I was in school, they couldn't go to school after the second week of June because they had picked strawberries. The strawberry crop wouldn't got to have picked if it wasn't for the school kids. In the fall they couldn't go to school er, uh, late, early because they had beans to pick, and so until the beans were all picked they couldn't uh, start school. Bellingham could, but uh, the county schools couldn't, and that's kind of the way it was then. They, uh, you were kept out of school to do labor, and my dad, my great, uh, my grandfather was, uh, well, he was 13 when he came out, and of course he didn't have to come, in, there was no school here when he came out, so he didn't have to go to school, so he thought he was through. He had had sixth grade education back in Minnesota. And so he didn't go to school. And his uh, brother, older brother, said, you need to finish the eighth grade. And so he t promised him a Courier and Ives picture if he would go back to school. So in 19, 1890, when he was 20 years old, he went back to grade school and finished the seventh and eighth grade and graduated in 1892. And got his Courier and Ives picture. So, but uh, it was individual. I mean, was there a school in Nooksack proper where the Masonic Lodge is now? Was that a gymnasium for a school? Where the Masonic Lodge was built as a uh, auditorium for the school originally. The the, two, the school that was built was two-story school and it did have a, an auditorium above in the second floor, but they built this other building as an as as a uh, as a uh, a performing arts center is what we would call it today. And uh, that's what, and it, then, then the Masons bought it uh, later on. So the school itself, was that where the Reformed Church is now? In, in the, the Reformed Church was built as a gymnasium for the school. I remember learning to play basketball in that church building. Oh. And it was over where the, the residence is uh, on the street. And the school was built where the parking lot is. Okay. The two-star right. parking lot. And where the uh, church is and all those houses was our playground. They owned the whole block. So was that in addition to the, lo the something in Everson? Or is it... Everson had a different school. So they're, okay. So Everson and Nooksack were never, <laughs> ever to be thought about in the same breath. <laughs> I still remember, a vivid memory of my childhood is standing under the basket in that old, what is now the Reformed Church. Matter of fact, every time I sing in the solo in the uh, Reformed Church, you stand up at the front, right by the nave, and I remember standing there with a basket above me, with a basketball under my arm, in a uh, plaid shirt and bib overalls and stocking feet and watching the Everson team snake out of the dressing room in tank tops, shorts and matching socks and <laughs> tennis shoes and most of the people, uh, uh, boys who became the star basketball players in my school went to that Everson school. One of them was my cousin. And I will never, I st we stood there shell-shocked. We had never seen a team that all had the same outfits. We had bib overhauls and plaid shirts and stocking feet. I have no idea what that score of that game was, but I don't think it was pretty. <laughs> I was the center because I was the tallest guy there, but uh, I, I still remember that vividly. So the school that was up where the cemetery mm -hmm. was, right. which one replaced that? Or did, did the Nooksack and Everson replace what was on the hill? 
No, 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 no. Remember, we don't talk about Everest and Nooksack in the same breath. They are not ever to be confused. Nooksack, <laughs> Nooksack always preceded everything that Everson did, but Everson always did it better before it was all over. Don can remember Everson very well because he went there. I remember Nooksack very well because I went there. She remembers Nooksack because she went there. She had a couple of years at Mount Baker too, but uh, the uh, Everson, whenever we consolidated in 1942, Everson said, we will not join with Everson, uh, with Nooksack and Sumas and, and go to school there. We will go to Mount Baker. And for, what, six years, five, six years, they went to Mount Baker. And those the Everson kids went to Mount Baker, the Nooksack kids went to Nooksack. And then so, they, so what was the root of this feud? Well, there was no feud. There were two different towns. They just happened to be... Basically, Nooksack was an agricultural community, and all the business people lived. This, the, the Presbyterians lived in Everson. The Methodists and the Admins lived in Nooksack. And never should be the Scots, should never mixed with the Germans and uh, Scandinavians. And it was it was a different, it was very interesting, and it's still to this day. Uh, there are people who, uh, my, some of my relatives in Nooksack uh, won't even chop in Everson. Nooksack was developed first. Nooksack had all this in it, but Nooksack had a real problem with fires. Nooksack Burn had eight fires, and all the business district burned down two or three times. Well, by the time they got around to the eighth fire, Everson had built up and had become a real a metropolis, quote. But you got to remember that Nooksack, it took 300 people to incorporate a town. Nooksack was incorporated in 12, Everson was incorporated in 28, 16 years later. So there was quite a difference. But the, uh, when I, like whenever I was going to school, and we were the poor, poor ag kids, and they were the the rich people from the Everson City. They had matching outfits and stuff like that. But the uh, the school that was up on the hill was Nooksack School. There was a log house, a log high cabin until that school was built, and I think that school was built in 90, 1890 or thereabouts. And then in 1906, 16 years later, they built the one down downtown in, in the main part of town. Uh, there was a little school out uh, that used to be called Gira, uh, that later went to Sumas, and Liberty was built. Uh, Liberty is where Dam Town is. Uh, it was a small town, and some of those people lived there. The Dieters went, uh, that was Dieterville. The Dieters went to that school. So, uh, but they were all little schools, and they each, none of them had a coordination with any other school. They were very independent and very much uh, governed by the people who went to that school. Like Inez's family, whole family went to that school. They all knew everything and knew everybody else. So, Reg. And how, how were they funded if they were so independent? Uh, by local tax, tax, taxation, okay. but it was almost a voluntary taxation. You know, there was very, uh, well, like they were saying, a budget of $50 a month. That was the teacher's salary. Everything else was donated. When hot lunches came to uh, Glen Echo, it was her aunt, who lived across the street, making a pot of stew, soup and taking it across the street. All volunteer, all donated. There was no such thing as school. Yes, back here. Oh, Jim, I know, I understand the difference between Everson and Nooksack schools, but you did meet for like athletic competitions, did the schools that Everson, Nooksack, Sumas ever get together for anything else, or only sports? Uh, in performing arts things they would do together, but not. No, I really didn't. Uh, uh, Inez has an in, had an interesting. She had a teacher who decided that. A Glen Echo that she was going to have was it a boys team, a basketball baseball team, boys baseball team. Well, she had a uh, a coop with a rumble seat, mm -hmm. 
That's the way the team went to the both ball games. Nine boys piled into that coop with a rumble seat and her, and she'd take them all to the uh, game and they'd play. But there, there was no such thing as uniforms. There was no such thing as uh, some of them had gloves, but most of them played without uh, gloves. They just played a, a ball game. It was uh, really kind of wild in some of the things they did. Any other questions? I, I was told now that my mother taught at Glen Echo and that she made 95 a month, but that was in 1925. Oh, my, so you're talking was, about the earlier yeah. era, yeah. 95, wow, that was really upscale. <laughs> Well, sometimes the uh, sometimes they had to they didn't have the money, you know, to uh, even pay the teachers. They had to go around and yeah. kind of beg from the farmers to. And, yeah. and of course, they didn't have to pay for a room and board. No. That was provided That's, by yeah. the district. With their mother, yeah. Yeah. And we if had you were really good. teachers. We had school teachers that lived at our house. Right. Yeah. And my mom. Uh, did all their cooking, the breakfast, and made their lunch, and, but they usually taught it Glen Echo or... Yeah. So it was pretty hard for the teachers to sneak out and date. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were living in one of the parents' houses. But of course, the, she talks about uh, friendships that were developed, that were lifelong friendships. Uh, those, some of those teachers came back and visited her folks as long as they lived on the farm. There's still a, there was a Goldie Abel. She was engaged to a guy. This is long, 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 long. And he went up to Mount Baker skiing and he was killed. And Goldie just kind of collapsed. I, I remember that so plain, yeah. But they were dedicated teachers. They'd have, they corrected papers at night and, yeah. Some of you think it was very, very safe. She thought it was pretty safe, but one experience she had uh, uh, well, indicates that it wasn't altogether safe. So if she can tell that story. Which one? <laughs> one with the men and the car and the truck. Oh. California license. My, I'd had chicken pox and I was sent home from school. No, my, Your sister then had... I went to school. Yeah. Yeah. And then they sent me home. But my sister came down. I mean, she was still in school. But they sent, they sent me home because maybe I would expose someone. And then a car with a California license, which we didn't see very often, came with two men in it. One was a skinny man and one was a big guy. And so they said, are you walking home? And I says, yes, I have quite a ways to walk yet. We lived on the old coal. And so they said, we'll take you there. You know, you can have a ride with us. And I says, no, and I kept walking. Well, that car kept backing up and backing up. And my grandpa and grandma Thompson lived right on the corner. And so I crawled underneath the barbed wire fence. And they sat there for a while, and then they drove away. But and when I got home, I told Dad, and because they said they'd stop at a yard, and it said Con Hogan on the uh, mailbox. So my he thought maybe, and my dad thought I was kind of fibbing. And so he called Con Margaret Hogan. And they said, yes, we saw that car. We'd never seen it before, but it had this California license, and it was really kind of snooping around. So that was Everson, a quiet little Everson. <laughs> so we might not have seen her had she not had quick legs, and Grandpa Spence was right there 
she jumped the ditch and, and went through the fence and then she got away. I got away. But uh, sometimes we don't understand that uh, things are rather primitive then. There, uh, South Pass was a gravel road. It was ba barely two two cars wide. Uh, there was nobody, nobody would have ever seen her or heard from her again. Uh, she would have just, just disappeared because that's the way the, uh, it was so primitive that the uh, brush and such would uh, cover anything else. And one story that I remember reading, and it's called The School Marm, a uh, gal in Anacortes, and I can't remember the exact year, but it was in her 1880s, I think. Anyhow, she decided she wanted to be a teacher, so she went over, walked over to Mount Vernon from Anacortes and uh, took the state certification and, and passed it. And then she walked home, and uh, on the way back, she of course it was getting dark before she got there, and there was a big trestle over the, the sw uh, slough, the Swinomi slough, and she noticed, she felt something in the back, she turned around, there was a cougar following her, and they were both up on the railroad uh, trestle by that time, and she just kept walking, and she said someplace along the line the cougar turned around and went back because didn't say side she wasn't such a good thing. Well, later she took the boat up to uh, well about where oh uh, above Woolley uh, a little bit maybe to Hamilton, and got off the boat, and a guy on a horse met her there, and then she got on got behind him on the horse. She's dressed in a dress you know, her Sunday best kind of thing, because she did, was going to go to work. And he was the guy, to, her transportation, took her up to probably about where Acme is, and then they forded the river, because the schoolhouse was on the other side of the river. So they, and the only thing we can get across the river is either have a horse, an animal to swim it with you, or to take a canoe. There was no canoe, so she swam across the river. And then she went and she taught in this little school, and in it, and uh, at Christmas, and she stayed with this family, and they let her go home for Christmas, and so they, they she went back the same way across the river on a horse, and and then came back after Christmas. Uh, fortunately, she married the guy on a horse, <laughs> and she never left the valley. She saw, and she's one of the pioneering families of the Acme area, and I can't remember all the story, but I thought, how many people would do that? <laughs>